So girl has COVID pretty much. And I'm still trucking along with this series. But <laughs> so at the start, you know, Shinoa and Gurren are dueling and they're fighting because, you know, both guides disagree on what's going on with you, which I mean, come on. I mean, it's obvious what's going on is bad, but ugh, I just... Anyway, so we find out that Gurren killed Shinoa's sister because Shinoa got possessed and became all demon. And Gurren's sword is actually Shinoa's sister. And I'm just like, what kind of Game of Thrones freaking witchcraft is this? There's so many plot twists, which I admit I was pretty interested by, but still, I just... <laughs> Meanwhile, Yu is studying and still recovering from, you know, what happened, which he's still not aware of because no one will tell him the truth. And he's researching to try to find a way to save Mika and turn him back into a human. He ends up being interrupted by Shinoa, who proceeds to tease him and claim, you know, she, he's looking at porn and steals his book. You know, grade school type crush bullying continues, I guess. We get an oddly placed butt shot, which, okay, sure. <laughs> and um, she ends up saying, you know, basically, there's no way to, you know, change a vampire back into a human. And if a person is changed into a vampire, there's usually a reason for that. And only certain vampires can even do that and so on. And then she says, hey, we're going to kill all the vampires. No exceptions. And Mika's is not going to be exempt here. And you was like, no, Mika is exempt. I thought he was dead and now he's alive and I'm going to keep it that way. And nothing you say can do anything about that. And, you know, Shinoa is not really happy about this. But whatever. Anyway, somebody calls you down to the a room. And whatever. I'm going to be real with you. I'm doing something different this time. I'm actually watching, pausing, and then recording, and then watching some more. So I'm blind as to what happens next at this point in the video. <laughs> We see a moment where you and Gurren talk, and Gurren basically says, Hey, I own you. I saved you. You know, don't go crawling and wagging your tail to other people and other owners. You just got me. And you is just not really appreciative of this. He's like, Dude, you don't own me. It's not like that. Why don't you trust me anyways? Obviously, I'm not going to betray my friends. And then Gurren's like, that's great and all, but I'm not your friend. And Yu's like, oh, really? Then what are you? Which means it implies that you, in a way, considers Gurren a friend. Which, boy, I don't think you should. Anyways, and Gurren agrees with this. Like, don't think of me as your friend because I'm not your friend. And I'm basically like your guardian, your protector, you're God, and you is like, ha ha ha, you're funny, but not really. After a shippy moment between Mitsuba and you, where we find out that not only is, um, you know, Shinoa basically royalty, so is Mitsuba. So, you know, that's cool, I guess. But these two still don't get along. And, you know, Shinoa is like, you know, you good to know you got promoted even though you don't deserve it which i think is kind of like a bitch thing to say but okay whatever anyway so then they talk about you and like they don't really know what's going on but it's clearly deeper than they think it's not sanctioned and yeah that's pretty much all that happens you enters a room and there's a vampire in there and the light's shining down on him and the vampire freaks out and goes and attacks him and you know you was like what the heck's going on but of course, you makes quick work of the dude. He's dead. But, you know, let's be real. We shouldn't use living beings as a test of people's freaking, you know, loyalty. This is another reason why 
I cannot stand the human side of this freaking war. Like, dear God. And it only gets worse from the next few scenes I just saw. Like I said, it's revealed to be a test, and we see these three, and they're like, this was a test to see if you're loyalty. Except, obviously, the test isn't fully over. And the dude who, I guess, is Shinoa's big brother, who just looks plain as a freaking heck, says, you know, fight me, but don't use your power-up weapon. And he does. And then he makes quick work of him, and he's, like, just, just goading him. Because I think they clearly think that Gurren is a traitor or a spy, which, let's be real, I think he is, too. But, you know, that's just me. During the goading of, you know, how, you know, he's probably not really worth it or a spy, Hugh does attack from behind, and he would have hit him, too, if it wasn't for that blonde-haired girl, you know, interjecting. Another thing we find out is that other character that I liked from that one episode, Shinya, who I kind of ship a little bit with Gurren, is an adoptive brother, and they also suspect he's a spy because he's very close with Gurren. You know, so there's that, I guess. I just, mm, I don't know. So, um, the testing of the loyalty stuff is not over, and it gets worse. The Higaragi family is so freaking messed up that it is no wonder that Shinoa is the way she is. She's a bitch, because her whole family are bitches. It's a family of bitches. So he enters the next room. And freaking Shiho and you too, my boys, they are beat up, tied up, gagged. They have been interrogated. And apparently they had no answers to give. So you was told that he's going to be asked some questions. And if he isn't honest, his friends are going to pay the price. And it doesn't matter because uh, no matter what answers that he gives... You know, they're they're not listening. It's ridiculous. First answer, totally wrong, not what they're looking for. Bam, Shiho stabbed in the back brutally. Like, oh my god! And Shiho, oh, he knew it was coming. He was like upset. But he's like, he's like, who prepared? Oh my god! I fucking hate this show so fucking much. They don't accept the answer to the next question. And so they have to stab the most innocent, weakest boy on the planet. Like, what did you two do to them? Nothing. You two does not deserve this. Sure, he may have non-consensually humped you in the that first or second episode. But that humping, that vigorous humping, does not deserve a stab in the freaking back. So apparently, the orphanage that Micah and you grew up in was known by these groups to perform human experimentation on humans. So both Mika and you have had human experimentation on them to deal with magic and other stuff. Hence, I'm sure, the Seraph of the End. So we know Gurren didn't necessarily, like, do you know, the whole, like, demon angel thing in that other episode. But he definitely made it appear with the meds, the steroids. But it was the... That's messed up orphanage, really? It's bad enough they're orphans. Now you have to also make them human experiments. Do orphans ever catch a break? Anyways, so he's like, hey, leave Gurren and join me and let me be your guide. And freaking use like let them go they get let go and then he's like you know what Gurren may be a dick but he would never do this and the dude's like yeah I know he wouldn't but that's why I'm a step ahead of him we of course see the end credits start as uh you leads you two and Shiho out and they are looking worse for wear and you is pissed he wants answers he sees Gurren waiting for him, and he's like, Gurren, what the heck? Did you save me because you knew what I am, that I'm a lab rat? Is all this true? And Gurren's like, duh, I knew what you were. I do not have the luxury to just save someone unless they're going to be useful to me. You're useful to me, so I saved you. And surprisingly, you was okay with this, and he's like, well, as long as I'm useful to you, that's okay, Right? Because all I care about is getting stronger and then going and um, rescuing Mika. 
And that's all I care about, basically. Corinne then responds with, we're family, dude. We're family, and I'm going to help you rescue your family. I told you I would, wouldn't I? That I'd help you get your family back. So Gurren is like, don't worry. And then he's like, I'm going to make you stronger. I'm going to teach you all this stuff, you know. We're useful to each other, you know. It's very much an equal opportunity, both useful to each other relationship, I guess. Lastly, we see that Mika is struggling with the hunger situation and it's definitely gotten worse. He is in pain. He is thirsty. He is, uh, you know, not well. A stupid boy tries to do the same mistake that Mika did in the past and offer his blood up, you know, to make things easier for his family. And Farad's like, straight up chokes him, lifts him up, but he's like, hey, Mika, drink this kid's blood. You'll feel better. But Mika's like, nah, man, we're not doing that. I'm, no, stop it. Human blood directly from the source is forbidden. And then Farrah's like, ha ha, fair enough, but you need to attend the next progenitor meeting. You know, there's that. And you better drink blood because uh, this is going to be the best you, you're going to look. You're, you're only going to look worse. Once he's alone, he, you know, gets in that position that you see, and he's just like, ah, this is painful, I'm hurt, I'm hurting, I'm dying, ah, uh, I need you, you, you come help me. Like, you know, you can hear him, and listen, Hugh has his own problems right now, Mika. <laughs> I wonder why he doesn't just leave the vampires. I guess because he needs Cruel's blood, right? Is that is that the only reason he stays? It, or is, I don't know, like, I feel sometimes him and Ferret are, like, almost buddies now, but other times I feel like they're just kind of dealing with each other, and I'm very conflicted. Anyways, that was that episode. <laughs> I I might do it again like this. So I'm, like, somewhat still blind reacting as I'm recording, but I don't know. We'll see. Also, this kind of saves time, because normally what I'll do is I'll watch an episode, and then I'll kind of, like mull it through it and think of what to say and here i'm just step by step by step and boom 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 and what could take me a day and a half is now just you know less about an hour not even so here we go <laughs> ah.